Um, let's look at this other video. This guy is pissed. The tummy is a Zionist, exposing him as a Zionist. Again, by the way, if you are a Zionist, then that means you cannot be far right. One of the main traits of far right is their anti-Semitic, their, their hatred for Jewish people, right? That's one of the most common traits of far right people. So if they say like, oh my God, Tommy is a Zionist, well, good. So then he's not far right then. So let's watch this. One of the chief instigators of these riots is someone called Tommy Robinson. And you can see him here wearing a t-shirt of the Israeli Defense Forces. He is openly taking photographs, posing with a genocidal army. He's gone to occupy Palestine illegally and taken photos on top of Israeli tanks. And we know for a fact that his benefactors, his patrons, are Israelis, right? He, his legal fees have been paid by Israelis, by Zionists. And he goes on Israeli television and he... By the way, I don't know if this is true because Israelis are always... Jews and Israelis are always like accused of being funding things behind the scenes and you know stuff like that but i mean it can be true because the israelis just like other people um want to support the things the people that they agree with i mean americans do that canadians do that french people do that the uh, south koreans do that so why can't israelis support but again they the trope is that jews are just behind the scenes always controlling and pulling the strings so i don't know if this is true or not but if it is true, that's great. I mean, why not? There's a, there's this guy that is uh, they identify with as a Zionist and somebody who's trying to protect um, his country from Islamization, and they support him. So, I mean, that goes against the other video that you were showing, like, oh, Jews want to protect themselves from Islamization, but they want the UK to be Islamized. Well, this claim contradicts that, because if they're supporting Tommy, then they're also supporting UK from being against being Islamized, right? Because why would you support Tommy? Like if maybe you have a shared shared enemy, which is Islamization of countries, and you're supporting the same person that is on your side. Admits that all of these riots, these, these pogroms are related to October 7. Basically admitting that, well, you know, he doesn't like that people are protesting against genocide. So advancing an Israeli agenda, which is what, which is... Yeah, so, so regarding the earlier video, Ben is saying maybe he wants to protect Muslim women. Yeah, he does. He does. Uh, Tommy does see uh, the benefit in protecting Muslim women um, from Muslim countries. He has been showing support for that. So again, he can't be racist or bigot. Genocide. So advancing an Israeli agenda, which is what, which is Islamophobia, which is anti-Arab racism. Tommy Robinson. That's not his real name. This guy has about five different names. We think his real name is uh, Stephen uh, Yaxley Lennon. This guy calls himself, you know, a, a massive English patriot. But ironically, his stepfather is Scottish and his mother is Irish. So, so look how the, he's accusing Tommy of being racist, but then look at the racism he has himself. So what does it matter where your ancestry is from? Being British, you, if you're a citizen of the UK, Right? You, maybe these people don't get it. Why are you using his heritage or your, his ethnicity against him? If he's a citizen and he's a, pow a proud patriot, then that's Brit that, that makes him a UK citizen and he wants to defend his nation state. Wouldn't you, he, like, if an Arab man comes and becomes a UK citizen and is proud of his country and wants to defend uh, the UK and defend its values? Would you not call him British? I, I mean, if you don't, then I could accuse you of being an anti-Arab racist. So why wouldn't you accept Tommy? Because who cares where his ancestry is from? Like, this is, race, this is racism. It's amazing how you accuse Tommy of being racist, and in the very next sentence, you just said something that is racist. Well, you know, when you have someone like that calling other people less... Yeah, and again, Susanna is pointing that Tommy is really passionate about Raif Badawi and ex-Muslims. Yes, and he has he's very he's very concerned about Raif and his family because when he uh, Tommy really relates to people when he sees their family suffering because of what other people are doing to them. Because he's such a family man, he always relates to them.
he always feels like really there's a lot of compassion that he has with people when he says uh, people when he sees their children and when he sees that their suffering is affecting their children that really affects Tommy and it doesn't matter what race you are and it actually it doesn't even matter if you're Muslim and I will show you that by the way I'll show you that in the next couple of videos that he doesn't care like he's at Tommy is like this channel is anti-Islam and not anti-Muslim. And if you don't believe that, I will show you that. I will show you that. He actually sympathizes with a lot of Muslims and he wants to protect them. He's, he's like us, he's aggressively anti-Islam, but he's not anti-Muslim. He's anti-mass migration, but he's not anti-Muslim. And I'll show you that. It's English uh, and changing his name to something more English from Yaxley Lennon to Robinson. He fled the United Kingdom just a few days ago, how can someone call themselves an English patriot and they have such disregard and contempt for the law? Again, you want to talk about illegal immigrants? No, what do you mean? He, he, he's, call, he's coming back for his court date. He's coming back. And also the law is being used unfairly against him. The law is not being consistent. And when it comes to treating Tommy, look at this. Go. How can someone call themselves an English patriot? And he yeah. fled the United Kingdom just a few days ago. How can... No, he's coming back for his court date. I showed you the video. Someone call themselves an English patriot and they have such disregard and contempt for the law. Again, you... And see, imagine how patriotic that you have to be when you don't have to come back, but because you have respect for the law, you, can't, you are coming back to for your court date because you want to show that you have respect for the law. That's how much... That's how patriotic this man is. Because he wants to show that I'm not anti the rule of law, that he's 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 willing to pay a heavy price for it, including maybe going to jail, because he wants to show respect for the rule of law. That's how patriotic this man is. It's unbelievable. You guys don't deserve Tommy. Honestly, <laughs> you guys are so ungrateful. Like this is a national treasure. Honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about illegal immigrants. This guy literally entered the United States with a fake passport. I mean, the hypocrisy is rank. No, no one is more illegal no, than American troops on foreign soil. No one is more illegal than British spy planes buzzing over news. Gaza or French troops occupying Africa. Okay? Those people you're calling immigrants what? are refugees. They're running away from our mess. We bombed their homes. We killed their friends. We killed their families. We left them jobless. We destroyed their economies. We destroyed them with sanctions. What are you talking about? The, the reason their economies will be nowhere with if it wasn't because of the growth of the economy of western countries yeah did was the did everything that the western countries did was it all correct no they did they have committed western countries have committed crimes in other countries but why don't you see the good part like they wouldn't even have countries their entire nation states are built based on the based on the framework the modern framework that western countries have designed and that's why they have any advancement that they have their technology comes from the West. Their methodology comes from the West. The entire politics comes from the West. The West have gifted so much to these other countries. Their economies would be 500 years behind if it wasn't because of Western countries advancing this much and sharing it with the rest of the world. So you see that you, 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 you give us a few examples of certain bad things that have happened. A lot of the bombings, by the way, also was not the Western country's fault. Some of them are criminal and some of them were not. Some of them were legitimate. Not all bombings are illegitimate. They, they, these countries would not even have the, the, this, this modern um, form of a nation state that Western countries have created that has made so much, the, the whole world uh, such a better place and such a more stable place Every, the whole world is now benefiting from that. They're benefiting from the internet that comes from the West. They're benefiting from computers that came from the West. They're benefiting from uh, medical technology that came from the West. That that's why they have their less disease. The reason why all of these countries have now access to clean water, to much higher, much higher quality of life, li much higher life, uh, high, higher lifespan, much less, uh, uh, much lower child uh, death, you know, mortality rates, all of this disease. Uh, all their lifestyle, the lifestyle of these countries, of the people of these countries, are so much better than even a hundred years ago because of Western countries. Why are you being so ungrateful? We looted and robbed their resources for centuries. No, you didn't. You you gave first of all the resources 
many of them was with their agreement. The resources that you say they looted, they wouldn't even have access to it if these Western countries didn't go there and use the technology and coming up with the agreements that they actually managed to give both of the Western countries. It was a win. Most of it was win-win agreements. Like the oil, the oil that Saudi Arabia and Iran had, they didn't even have access to that oil until the technology of the Westerners made them have access to it. Some of those agreements of how much the share the Western countries get because of the technology and how much of it they get, some of it was fair, some of it was, was unfair. But it wouldn't even be available to them if the Western countries were not there. And what are you talking about? Looting? Yeah, so there were some unfair agreements, but why are you, why are you not talking about all the things that were gifted to them because of Western countries? Trees. Thieving. Yeah, exactly. They didn't even know what the hell this is for. Like when, when the British came to Iran and they discovered oil and they, and they wrote, wrote an agreement with Iranians, with the Qajar dynasty, the Qajar dynasty was like, you guys are idiots. Like these people, like it was on the newspaper, right? They were like, why are they buying this from us? This is useless stuff. And they're paying us so much money for us for it. They're like this idiot British people, like, yeah, let's just, and it was with an agreement. It was signed agreements. It was, it wasn't like, oh, let's get that by force. They were like, hey, we did, we did, this is liquid stuff coming out of your ground. We want it. Can we have it? They're like, how much are you willing to pay us for it? Like this much. They're like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah, sure. Take it. It was an agreement. And then when the Iranians realized, for example, many years later that this is actually worth a lot more than they assume, uh, they, 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 they decided to, they, they, we don't like that agreement anymore. And the British were like, well, we have an agreement. And they're like, we don't like it. And they, they Mossadegh came and they're like, okay, we need a new agreement. And every time, the, like in the Middle East, the, you know, the Saudis or the Iranians or the Iraqis, every time, even though they had the agreement that this is how much the share that the British or the uh, other people are supposed to get, when the people were, you know, did a protest and like, we don't like this agreement, the British are like, okay, let's sign a new agreement. If you don't like it, let's sign a new agreement. They had to always give in to the demand of the people, even though they had a previous agreement. They're like, well, we didn't know how much this is worth. So they, every time they came up with a new agreement, I don't know what you're complaining about. Again, I know there were many examples of situations that were unfair, but you're making it seem like they just came in with force and with no agreements. They were like, oh, we're just going to have this and we're just not going to care about what you want. It wasn't like that. To the point they can't recover and stand up on their own two feet. We kept, you know, we kept drilling this into their heads, how the white man. By the way, I'm not making this stuff. I literally have newspaper. There's pictures of newspapers back then. You know, people saying these people are idiots. This is a this is a bad smelling liquid that has no use, and they're giving us so much money for it. And it's so much better. And now that they want to come over and take a look and see where their money went, you put up a wall. If only there was a wall to stop your thieving ass 300 years ago. If only. If only. You know, the same people. <laughs> What do you mean thieving? They gave they, these countries were so much more backwards before they came be, before the British Empire came there. What is, there's a there's a Monty Python sketch about this. Like, what did the Romans ever do for us? Go watch that. This is the, exactly the copy of that. They built those countries. They made them civilized. Also, when they when you're talking about three hundred years ago, back then we didn't have this modern no, notion of a nation state. Like now that we have that, back then we had empires. Empires, how the whole world was. Like, oh my God, the evil British didn't recognize the sovereignty and the independence of these places. What are you talking about? This is the the idea of nation state and every people having a nation with a state that represents that nation. This is a modern idea. Before the British Empire, everything else that was before it was an empire. The British Empire was just replacing other empires. Like, you're like, oh, now you want a wall? Yeah, this idea of a border for nation states where, where it was invented in Western Europe after the Age of Enlightenment, and then after the you know, and then was implemented after the first world, uh, you know, mostly after the first world war, uh, war world war in in everywhere else. This is something that when they when the Europeans they invented for themselves. They gave it to the rest of the world as well. They didn't, once they accepted that this is our nation state and we will have a nation and a state and a border and a state that reflects that nation and a border to protect it, they didn't say that this is just for us. Once it was for them, it was for every country. 
That was the whole point of having the League of Nations and then eventually the United Nations. To again, like everybody gets to have this now, not just us, 